Hello guys, Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench and I've got a little kit review for you and it is a little kit review. Um, you've probably seen from the title of this video that yes I've been to Antics this morning uh, and today, well it's now afternoon, uh, I was over at Antics for ages. Uh, lots and lots of good stuff to look at. Um, so yeah I went over there and I've just got back and I thought I'd do a kit review for you and it's, it's, it's a lovely kit. Um, it's something that I wasn't expecting to buy. And here it is. I saw this on Andy's, head, Andy's Hobby Headquarters and fell in love with it straight away. It looks to be a very, very crisply moulded, very well made, very well engineered kit that won't be a massive build. And I really fancied it. And I don't know why, but you know, sometimes you see these things and you really fancy them. Um, just really, really nice. They've also got this one which is the big ammo one, which, which only comes with a Spanish livery, uh, which looks lovely, but I'd rather do the German. Um, and I like doing German grey, but there's one here with some grey and green camouflage. So, uh, yeah, we'll have a look around the box of this in a minute. Um, but yeah, this, this is a kit review for this, and it's lovely. Now, you're all probably thinking, did I get the uh, Titanic? What do you think? There you go. Yes, I did. And I'll do a review of that as soon as I finish this one. But before we do that, um, this is a totally different angle, isn't it? You've never seen me from this way before with my paint rack in the background here that I made. And you can see there's all bits and pieces. This is the side of my uh, little airbrush booth you can see here. And then behind me, this is the bench where I work. And I've got my little storage areas here. That's all my spare parts and everything stored in there. And then this is... Um, the top one is scribing, the second one down is drilling, the third one down is cutting and the bottom one is sanding. So anything that falls into those categories all go in those drawers. And I find that's the best way to keep stuff rather than have tiny little drawers with each individual thing. Um, this is the Land Rover project. So just bring it over here, you can see there's all the parts there all painted green and I've been doing some work on the on the actual tub there as well getting rid of some of those marks that we could see through the paint so that's um that's being videoed as we speak and we'll be up with you very shortly uh the thing is i need to leave the paint like you know sort of two days to dry otherwise you know when you try to sand it it just doesn't come off it just all rolls and stuff um you can see here behind me as well there's all my lovely premium hobby stuff and this is the old one. I remember I talked about this in one of my videos. This is the old one with the white glue spots on it. I found another use for these that you may really, really take on board. At the moment, I'm building a radio controlled Land Rover from Tamiya. And um, as you know, when you build some of their radio and even some of their scale models, you get a lot of bags with screws and stuff in A, B, C and everything, especially their, like their six scale motorcycles. What a wonderful way to store your nuts and bolts and screws and everything, you know, A, B, C. Absolutely wonderful. So I, I was going to sort of give this away, but I'm, I'm going to keep it for that. When you've got kits with screws and stuff in, perfect. So, you know, you know, three little pockets to keep them in. And because it's black, they'll all stand out like a sore thumb, unless they're black bolts, of course. Um, but yeah, so um, another great use for them. So... There we go guys, so that's the different angle and the reason I'm able to do this is I bought a tripod from Amazon and it was like £14 and it even comes with a remote that makes the camera go on and off on the iPhone 6S Plus. So yeah, really, really chuffed. So um, anyway, enough waffling from me, I'm going to turn the camera around, get to the bench normal shot and we'll have a look at this Tacon tank. Right, so here we go. This is the kit. It's um, Tacon and it's kit number 1008 as you can see and it's a 16 scale. Panzer 1 Ausf A. Uh, it says here it can be built in open or closed position with the hatches. Don't see the point, it's got no interior. Um, suspension and road wheels movable. Detailed static display plastic model. PE and clear parts included. Four types of markings and workable tracks. Looking around the side of the box, we've got here some versions that we can build. And I'll bring some light in there because we won't get so much reflectivity. There we go. So we've got the 5th um, Company Panzer Regiment 1, 1st Panzer Division Poland, September 39. I think that's the one I would do. And then we've got 8th Company Panzer Regiment 5, 
uh, 5th Lichter Division, Libya, July 1941. There's obviously that version there on the front. And then on this side, there's a, it says four versions, so there's one we're missing. And on this side of the box, we can see all the plastic parts laid out. So as you can see from this, this is not a massive project. This is a real sort of mojo builder. You could get stuck into this, probably build it in a weekend, and you could probably build and paint this in a weekend, to be honest. Um, you know, if, if you're not going to be really too finicky about accuracy and stuff like that, it looks like it's going to be a fantastic, enjoyable build. And I may well build this as a one shot video, um, you know, build it and then do another video for the painting and weathering. But yeah, really, really nice. Um, and it's a really nice size as well. As I say, this is the one you can get from Migamo. They've got this at Antics as well. They've only got one of these left. Um, so one of each, sorry, one of the Tacklum and one of that one. Exactly the same kit, it's just that this one's got the different markings. And I did look inside the box and you do get a nice Spanish um, Spanish Legion poster as well. I think it's a poster asking people to join the Spanish Legion. On the end of the box here, we just got the simple normal display like so. So going inside the box, we have the usual Tacklum resealable wrinkly plastic bags. I don't know about you, but that to me looks like the front of an American truck. That is a cab over truck if ever I saw one, something like a Mac. So um, there we go. So there's all the sprues and we can see the size of it. There's my hand. We've got some lovely, crisp, beautifully molded sprues as always with Tacom. My only thing I don't like with Tacom and I can't see it here is where they have to put their sprue attachment points over the sides of the parts which gives you more cleanup. So let me get these parts out of these bags to avoid all the wrinkling and everything. And then um, we'll have a look through the instructions first and we'll go from there. All right, so we've got you zoomed in here so you can get a good close look at these instructions. And then if you want a close look at anything, you can pause the screen and have a good look. So we've got some history on the front here telling us all about it, 1930 and um, 1936 here, 800 examples were built. So yeah, we've got, um, all the information on there and uh, yeah looking very nice typical I mean Tacom they really for me they are a, a really really class A company they are amazing as I say the only one downside I have with Tacom my only one criticism is how they often have the sprue connector points going onto the face of parts and you know something like on this part here they haven't done it but if you look at other kits I've reviewed and other kits I've built they they have the sprue connector point connected to the side and going over onto the front. Not going over onto the back where it doesn't matter, going over onto the front. So, you know, and it's really annoying when it's on tires and stuff because it takes a lot of sanding. Other than that, I absolutely love Tacom. Um, I mean, their T55 range of tanks is just beautiful in my opinion. So anyway, um, I'm waffling. So there's the uh, beautifully laid out instruction manual. So what I'm gonna do is do this as, um, is basically page by page and move it across a little bit of glossiness here i'm sorry guys but the rest of the manual's matte so giving us all our colors and everything here from it's only giving us mig humanith um colors and then you've got some bits and pieces here about applying decals and removing pe and filing it and everything so if only it was that big eh so right there's our sprue call outs and they are numbered so um there's a the benefit there you can see we've got the individual track links and individual track pins, which is a really nice touch. And you've got a decal sheet here and some photo etch. We'll go through all that in a minute. And then typical of Tacom, we've got the um, instruction manual laid out in these sort of um, three-dimensional black and white CAD drawings. So what we can see, we've got suspension going on here. Now I thought it said it had working suspension on the front of the box, but we'll see. Um, so we've got working parts here by the look of it because they're telling us not to glue. We're not gluing the wheels. Um, and it's got an exclamation mark there, which means, exclamation mark means be careful. So be careful with that because it's probably got springs on it and stuff and it's sharp and it's going to hurt you. I don't know why you would want to be careful with that. So um, yeah, they're telling you not to glue that as well. So you're going to get pivoting suspension and then you've got your road wheels going on there. Uh, we've got separate rims on the outside of the wheels and we've got separate hubs for the centres as well. And then we're going to add these onto our onto our hull. And then we're going to we've got some um, pivot parts there going on. And then we've got this sort of like railway carriage. It always reminds me of a, a steam train, that, that girder along the side there, which links the uh, links the bogies together. Um, 
the, obviously for a version D we've got to um, drill a hole then moving along we're putting the same on the other side and it just repeats and then here we're going to start on our we've got our headlight here and then we've got the um, the front the, the glasses panel we've got our metal cable going on here and then we build up our tracks so we've got 86 links per side and 86 links so there we go and we're going to add our um, add our front sprocket on there then we're going to add our agree greeblies and bits and pieces to the front it's telling us we need to drill some holes here and what's nice with Tacom they also tell you the diameter you need to drill them a lot of other companies don't notice as well there's no painting guide as we're going through it's all just uh, it's all just assembly and then we've got our tools here we've got our jack there which is um, beautifully detailed jack and some cable cutters very very nicely detailed by the look of it looking forward to seeing the parts exhaust system here going on and then we've got two exhausts one either side and then we've got the um, the track guards there we've got another light unit there we're going missing a page then we've got our mud guards going into the track guards and then dropping the track guards down onto the top of the um, on top of the main hull you may decide to build it differently than this you may decide to leave the wheels off you may decide to do everything painted as you go you may decide to just build it and then paint it in the end um, if that's the beauty of armor modeling you can kind of do it any way you like and that's why a lot of people like armor modeling because you can like with aircraft you've got to paint the cockpit and then you've got to paint the undercarriage bays and you've got to do this and you've got to do that with these you can just throw it together and then coat it in paint if you want to well not throw it together but you know so anyway um, hatch is going in here and that's the uh, driver's hatch by the look of it and then we've got some more hatches going on the side there of the of the structure you've got the base for the turret going on there more hatches and openings and bits and pieces and then we've got more hatches <laughs> going all around the structure there and then we've got our uh, photo etch guards for the for the top of the um, exhaust mufflers get a real nice rust effect on them and then cover them up and sort of tarnish all that with a bit of heat damage and stuff Look lovely put some dents in them and um, then we've got some more hatches uh, smoke launchers by the look of it or grenades is it and then we've got I, I'm afraid I don't know much about World War II um, German armor um, and then we've got more mud guards here by the look of it going on is that mud guards I'm not sure what they are they're just guards <laughs> guards of some sort going on the back there and then we've got more hatches and then over the page finishing off we're going to build up our turret more hatches going in the turret adding on the top the um, the commander's hatch and then we've got two um, machine gun rifles or machine gun rifles machine gun barrels coming out of here and that's it that's all the armament that's, that's the guns it's got there's no uh, no massive big gun on there or anything and then here we've got our painting options it's going to stand and make sure you're not being glossed out uh, move the light a bit so we've got some different painting options here so that's the one that's on the that's the one that's on the front of the box yes um on the side of the box should i say i think that one's not on the side of the box this is this one's the one from the front of the box that's on the side of the box and that's on the side of the box so uh, yeah that's the one that's not missing so basically we've got gray green gray green gray green and then we've got the um the desert camo there and what's really nice with tacom as well which is becoming a rarity these days is they're telling you the actual vehicle where it was from what period it is and everything if you look at trumpeter these days and it's it's really annoying they just kind of give you four options and there's no mention of where they're from or anything you just have to do your research and guess but you're not sure if it's a genuine um genuine unit or, or anything and then we've got some other kits here you've seen me build the um the Stracker band this one here i haven't built the rocket something i might do one day actually this is something i might get hold of but um i think that needs to be kit bashed with something else and then on the back of the instructions there we've got the view of the um of the actual um front of the the tank there so funny not having a big gun on the front but never mind so let's have a look at some of the plastic I'll start with the hull and as you can see it's quite a sizable piece of plastic it is 20 nearly 23 centimeters long and the actual width of the hull is nearly nine centimeters wide so um yeah a good old piece of plastic that we've got some lovely detail very sharp very crisp detail on the riveting and stuff two ejection not ejection injection pin marks there so just have to cut them off and give them a little sand back um, 
but yeah lovely um don't know what these cutouts here are for maybe we're going to be getting an interior kit so that'll be interesting to see or well, that might just be to reduce the mold section to uh to not have any sinkage so here we go and there's the back edge of it there you can see all that very very nice indeed also it's it's, it's very solid and it's also flat and square as well there's no there's no rattle in there so perfect molding then we've got our actual turret here which again we've got these um these sprue connection points that don't go up onto the edge so they've probably finally started uh, listening there is some sinkage around there but that's not going to matter but there is some there if you're a, a, per a perfectionist you could probably just sand that away just to get rid of it but you can see the screw detail in there is exquisite really really nice and some nice weld detail as well all around the sides very nice indeed and here we've got the front of our Mack truck so this is obviously going to be part of the part of the hull that's going to go back there somewhere so uh, yeah that's the back that's the engine cover by the look of it so very nice 2019 it says on there and um, yeah again we've got some lovely detail on the back edge there you can see make the camera focus and again we've got that lovely screw detail that's going to look fantastic under a wash maybe it would be better to go for the desert camo to so you can make your uh, washes pop and stuff and then we've got track links i'm just doing this by the, the smallest track the smallest tracks the smallest sprues first and then we'll um, look at the big stuff so very very flexible i think because of the section rather than the material it's made of but that is some of the crispest sharpest molding i think i've ever seen and we can see they've got slide molded holes in the sides for the track pins and you've got beautiful molding on here look how crisp that is and you've got the holes through the sides that go right the way through you can see through there here you can see my finger going through the sides there beautiful detail on those horns tiniest but hint of flash but i mean it would probably have that in real life anyway and then we've got got some mold seams to sand off and we've only got three connections through connections per track beautiful they're gonna look lovely and then here's the pins here's the pins that um go between them so again very very sharp very very crisp molding beautifully done clear parts so i'm just getting the small sprues out of the way first clear parts there we've just got headlight lens there and then two other clear clear lens covers there we get a length of the copper wire which is yes it's flexible and poseable it's got a bit of spring in it but i'm guessing you could probably anneal it and make it go a bit softer and then we've got our one little sheet of photo etch which is just basically those two grills covering the exhausts let's move on to some big sprues so this is the kind of main sprue now i'm gonna have to bring the camera up so you can see bring it all in so we've got the main sprue there and we can see here this is the these are the track guards and this is the underside the back of the sprue we're looking at here and we can see we've got these massive z pins there which need to be cut off and we have got under detail on the um on these track guards and also we've got ejector pin marks but they're all raised so they're going to sand off easily with a you know i'll get us like a skinny stick something like this get in there with that just sand that away and as you can see just a few strokes with a skinny stick i mean this one's very worn out you can see it's very old but um and it's fine to start with but um here you go pretty much gone so uh yeah nice nice job there thanks tacum they're all raised all of them so no filling required just sand them off and then and here we've got this lovely convoluted piping for the exhausts you can see we've got some lovely bolt detail on there grill detail on there on the inside and the outside which indicates that possibly there is an interior kit coming so there we go beautiful um tread plate detail on there i didn't call it checker plate i call it tread plate really really crisp i'll give you a close-up in a minute lovely sharp grill beautiful bolt detail on here castellated bolts yeah and and really sharp this is this is just crying out to be built and, and washed 
see the bulk detail on there is really really nice grill detail beautiful look at those castellated nuts on there absolutely gorgeous and the weld seams around the edge again we've got those screws are back those convoluted pipes are really nice screws in there and then that lovely tread plate on there again with the bolt detail in it as well so far for me this is a 10 out of 10 because there aren't any of these dafty sprue connection points that i know i keep talking about but um they do sort of really drag on your build okay we get two of these this is sprue a and uh yeah, again they haven't done it on here you see on, on the um on the frice crown or freeze crown i think they say that you get if you watch that build you'll see i spent ages cleaning up sprue eject uh, uh, sprue connection points it looks like they've listened to people and they've stopped doing it and look how fine the connection points are on those sprockets again the bolt detail on those sprockets is exquisite and there's casting numbers on the actual wheels themselves and then we've got the wheel rims here there's ejector pin marks on those tires which are actually sunken so they if you're a perfectionist they're going to need filling but the wheels are the same front and back so no they're not yes they are so you could actually just put those facing in any way or you could just um fill them depending on what sort of perfectionist you are but um yeah absolutely beautiful let's look, look at these close up they're stunning really gorgeous looking wheels with the, the detail on there this is like mini art these kits just keep getting better and better and better look at those nuts and bolts on there beautiful it'd be a shame to weather this like do it do it in the um do it in the uh the desert brown or desert tan whatever and then um give it a wash you can see the the markings on the tires there we've got tire continental and it is actually continental there's no false lettering in there or anything so they've obviously got a license or they don't care and there's some other lettering on there which i can't get the camera to focus on here we go that's obviously the size or whatever of the tire so that's your return rollers mm. lovely okay next sprue we get two of these as well this is sprue b and then we've got our idler there this is the back side just looking for any dafty sink marks or ejector pin marks and there's nothing so here we go sprue b there's our idler there and then we've got a hatch detail there with those beautiful screws and everything some little slits for the uh, for, for the um for viewing and um, whatever that is I'm not sure what that is but uh part of the exhaust system I think yes the exhaust outlet and that's slide molded so you've got the actual exhaust outlet there got this lovely leaf spring detail and the bump stops beautiful leaf spring detail even on the ends really really crisp and no sink marks off there is a very very slight sink in that one but you often get sink marks in leaf springs because they're quite thick and then we've got the, the tensioners here again let's give you a close-up round here so there's your idler there's your um, track tensioners really really beautifully done have they got threads on them I don't think they have you could add threads <laughs> I'm guessing they're about a millimeter now I've got some millimeter dies um, yeah really really nice the spring detail is beautiful can you tell I'm impressed with this kit it was a real off-the-cuff purchase and as, as I said I saw Andy's headquarters did a quick review of it and um, quite liked it and then I saw it there in the, in the just-in pile at Antics and thought mm, I'm having that so here we go another really impressive sprue now I've got two the two machine gun barrels here are about to fall off the sprue so I'll show you those quickly before they do fall off so we can see we've got really really crisp detail on the cooling jackets but you could still probably get away probably do with replacing these with aftermarket and they're on the end of the sprue they're on their own and they're slide molded so you can see you've got a bit of a hole in the end they can do with some more drilling out but i think probably a quick few swipes with a fine sanding stick and a good wash and they'd look fine 
Okay, so let's have a look at the rest of this sprue. So we've got um, that's kind of your your, your mantle, as it were. Um, not exactly sure what that is. Some sort of air intake pipe, perhaps. Some sort of hosing. Uh, and then we've got the viewing slits. We've got our axe with the lovely clamps on, really nicely done. Our cable cutters. That's the surround for the mantlet. That's our headlights. Again, slide molded, so they've got lovely uh, hollow interiors and they've got bulb detail in there as well. we'll look at that close up in a sec. Um, that's our rest, our rack for the uh, aerial. Do, 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 do. And there's the aerial itself by the look of things. Um, some sort of handle there, lights. And there's the uh, jack, that's the little um, rack and pinion for the jack. Suspension springs, beautifully finely moulded cabling on these lights here. Here we go. Have a good look at all that guys. Really, really lovely. And the, the detail on that hosing you can see is lovely as well. There's your jack body. There's your axe with your tool clamps. Shovel again with tool clamps. Pieces of suspension there by the look of it with the, the clamps on the ends. Springs, there's lights which are really really nice. There's the rack and pinion for the jack. And then these lights here, as I said, you've got the headlights on the end here. And then they've got the bulb detail inside them. Really lovely. It's funny, got two headlights on there, but only one headlight lens on the clear part. So obviously you only use one. because We've obviously got another kit coming. Another variant of this, probably the B, which I believe is longer. And then our final sprue is this one here which is sprue C and this again is our main upper hull structure and I can see some beautiful detail on here so we've got the um, that's going to be the front glasses panel is it I'm never sure if the glasses panel is the one underneath or the one on top um, someone please tell me in the comments below and then we've got our turret mounting there we've got the turret ring um, commander's hatch and then more hatches there and some fenders there but look a bit but, uh, yeah again on here you've got the the really it's a lovely texture to the plastic you've got the lovely screw detail beautiful welding detail on there and then there's that front panel again beautiful screw detail rivet detail there you've got screws rivets nuts bolts everything on this really really nicely done wow this is one of those Build it. I said it could be a weekend build. It's going to be one of those build it in a weekend and spend a month painting it because it really does deserve it. You can go to town with your filters and washes on this. Again, look at those castellated nuts. Beautiful. Mm. So that's it, guys. That is your oh decal sheet. Let's have a look at the decals. It's a, a Ziploc bag, so we'll get them out. So there we go. We've got the they're Tacum's own by the look of it. Tacum decals are absolutely fine. So we've got the, um, the numbers there, we've got some more numbers there, some stripes, and then we've got all our different German crosses in all different shapes and sizes and colours and all sorts. Really, really nice. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I, would, I mean, there's no real register to, to, to speak of because everything's basically white, but we've got minimal carrier film. And they're also quite matte. But um, my experience with tack on decals is very nice indeed. So that's it, guys. That has been the Tacom 116th Panzer Kampf 1 Aus A. As I say, the kit number is 1008. And uh, yeah, go get yourself one. Absolutely gorgeous. Some of the finest detail I've ever seen. On, uh, on a kit and I think the fact that it's 16th scale just makes it that much better because sometimes this sort of size stuff can be quite toy like and this isn't at all. Thanks for watching I hope you've enjoyed this and um, yeah I'm going to give you a titanic size review soon. Bye for now.